Introduction time. Ooh, I just woke up. Welcome to Sir Fish a Lot, the YouTube fishing channel to show my passion for fishing. My name is Corey McMurchy. I am not an expert. I don't catch a lot, but I do fish a lot. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Let's go visit. So in this episode of Sir Fish a Lot, I thought I'd do something a little bit different, not fishing. Uh, it recently just snowed here. We had a huge storm, huge dump, so it got me pretty excited for uh, quote-unquote hard water season, ice fishing season. Uh, while I was doing some fishing this year, I came across a broken rod. Uh, it's a telescopic rod, so I thought I might try and make it into a uh, what's called a, a dead stick. All a dead stick is is um, <coughs> a dead stick. What's a dead stick? How would you describe a dead stick? A dead stick is a rod that you have sitting or some kind of apparatus that you have sitting on top of the ice and it keeps your bait suspended uh, at a certain depth. So if you're targeting you know, fish that feed lower or fish feed in the middle or fish that feed higher, you uh, can adjust that. So it's a telescopic and it's got pretty decent action on it. So I was wondering if I should maybe make it as a uh, self-setting. I wasn't too sure. It's got a reel, came with a reel, it's not, I don't really like this kind of reel, you know, it's probably like a Walmart special $10 rod, which works great, you know, but uh, I was really interested in the telescopic aspect of it, so having a tip up that's a little bit longer, get a little more action, so uh, uh, the handle, because it was broken on the end there, I gotta make my own handle, and that's what the wood's for, I'm gonna make a uh, handle out of wood, and I think I'm gonna make a detachable base. Looking at the uh, iTipUp Pro, I like the idea that you can um, have your rod in there and then move it. So I'm going to do something similar to that, but I think I might have the option to make it uh, self-setting as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to cut that into a piece suitable for a handle. So that's what we'll do next. Okay. Now, as you can see, I don't really have a shop to work with. I got a basement, so I'm going to use that. I do have power tools, but it, I don't want to make a lot of dust. Don't want to do a lot of cleaning, so hand saw. So what I'm going to do first to start off with for the handle is I'm going to take this stuff isn't very thick. It's about three quarters to an inch thick. I want to double that, so I got something that I can carve for the handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a chunk of this going to cut it in half, uh, cut it lengthwise here, and then I'm going to take another piece and then glue them together, let that set up, and then that'll be the beginning blank of my handle. Um, so. This sucks. Power tools. Tim the tool man Taylor. <laughs> You see how much faster that was? Oh my goodness.
right, so there's the start to our handle. We got two chunks. I'm just gonna glue them together, strap them, let the glue set up, and then when they're done, drill a hole in there, and that'll be the start. The little buddy's coming to say hi. Say hi, Kaiser. Hi. <laughs> All right. Couldn't find a uh, popsicle stick or anything, so yeah. all we're gonna do is glue these two pieces together, clamp them, using just carpenter's glue. 25 minutes. Stay clamped. Should be good to go. Good to go. Good to go. Good to go. Got my little helper here. So I'm not going to go too crazy with the glue. Or maybe I am. I always do too much. Okay, so I'm just going to... Hey, buddy. <laughs> you got to come back here if you want to say hi. Stand over here by me. Right there. Come and say hi. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we're just gonna. Well, maybe I should do this up here so you guys can see. Do, 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 do. Spread the glue around. Glue? Make sure we got a nice even coat. Wow. Get adhesion. Oh, there the in here. That's a big one. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think, mister? Is this going to make a good uh, good handle for the fishing rod? Yep. I'm glad you think so. Don't tell mom about this, though. We're using the garden labelers, okay? Okay. Hey, can you help me out? Can you go throw that in the garbage? Yep. Thank you. Put this here. Okay. Okay, so now let's clamp Put this together. This You're doing great, mister. Yep. Thanks for helping. Yeah? Yeah. I don't really like how many clamps I've got, but we'll make do with what we got. Thanks, buddy. Welcome. Now, I don't have a wood lathe, so I'm going to be doing a lot of this work by hand. Um, I think my next step is I'm going to sand all of my edges and make sure it's really nice and square. And then I'm going to go from there. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing is uh, doing a dovetail on the end here. So that when I slide it into the base, it's uh, nice and sturdy. And then so I'll have the handle there. Then I'll have the rod coming out of a hole. I'm just going to hand drill the hole. But I think I might let the glue set up a bit longer. They recommend it was 25 minutes. But I can see here that the glue isn't really fully, fully set up. It's, uh, well, you can tell, you can see here, maybe, where it's still that light yellow color. The glue hasn't quite set up yet, but the darker glue area has. So probably going to let that set up quite a bit more until it's fully done. Might even have to leave it overnight to keep working on it. I also don't have a drill press. Drill press would make uh, drilling the uh, top hole for the rod to go in quite easy. So I'm gonna, just gonna have to use a cordless drill because that's what I got. We're off to a pretty good start. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, one of the base things that I was thinking of doing was uh, doing a V shape um, <clears throat> and then having it self set the hooks into the mouth after enough. Um, nibbles but uh, I'm not an engineer I'll keep thinking about it I'll look up other designs of uh, other tip-ups that are commercially sold and see how they do their uh, self-setting systems see if I can incorporate that into this design all right so the glue is all done and dried um, as you can see it's all the same color now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it a little down to size on the side. I don't want a lot of dust inside. I'm just going to use a belt sander, run it along the belt sander, trim it down, make it smaller, make it lighter, make it easier to use.
right, so got it all sanded up here. You can see. Do -do 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 -do. Some of you might say, how come I didn't just buy a cherry two by two? That's a really good question. Really good. I'm gonna go carve this down a little bit more. I'm gonna sit down and get comfortable. This next part's gonna take me quite a while. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a utility blade. It's got a nice sharp edge. And I'm just gonna take little chunks off, little bits at a time. I think the term is whittling. So I'm gonna whittle this down until I get it closer to the shape that I want. Uh, on the bottom here, on the opposite way the seam is, so the glue seam is right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut an angle on here. So when it's on the ice, it's sitting at about this angle. And I'm gonna use uh, what's called a dovetail join. And it's just gonna be able to slide back and forth this way. So if I wanna take the rod off the base, I can just slide it back out through the dovetail and then use it like a regular rod. So let's get at it. All right, so here it is, the basic shape of the handle. So I'm gonna use this as the base, and then this will be where the rod will go in, be drilling into there. So I'm gonna do some sanding now and get it even more refined to the shape that I wanna get. All right, so I got uh, some more sanding done. So it's getting really close to being a good, good handle, good size. I'm gonna just keep sanding by hand now. Uh, I think I'm gonna start getting a little leery about taking too much material off and then when I go to drill my hole here, I won't have enough and then I might drill through on a side because I don't have that drill press. So we'll just keep going and then um, I'll work on the base after I'm comfortable with where the handle's at.
All right, so now I've got that cut on it. It's feeling a lot lighter, which is good. It's a tip up, so it doesn't really matter how heavy it is because you're not going to be holding on to it all day. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the hole down here for the rod part and I'll work on the dovetail later. I've never done a dovetail cut, so I'm excited. All right, now we got my drill battery and it's all charged. Let's drill the hole. Now normally, I would prefer to use a vise. Get this guy sitting there in a vise, so all I have to do is concentrate on getting the drill down. So we're just gonna hand bomb it and see how we do. This wood is tough. Should be excellent. Wow. This thing's gonna last forever. All right, same task, different day. Trying to drill the hole for the rod to go into. Good. You got that pretty square in there. That is really long for a dead stick. So the epoxy that I bought is a one to one ratio. So you just have to mix equal parts of the hardener and the resin. I'm just going to use these cups. I don't need a lot, so as you can see, there's a little bit of a ridge there. I'm just going to fill up to there, mix them together with a spoon. Now, I've seen some guys do some tricks where they're um, doing uh, adding heat to get rid of air bubbles. I don't really care about air bubbles too too much, as long as I get a good solid adhesion and the rod sticks into the handle. That's what I'm concerned with. So I got it mixed. I'm just gonna spread some out on here. Made quite a bit more than what I'm going to need, but that's okay. I didn't really have any other choice other than these cups here. So I've got a good. Okay, so there's the bottom. We've got some progress going on here. So I thought I'd update you guys. So we've got the reel on and attached. I notched a groove out for the base of the reel to sit in. The uh, rod's been epoxied in to the handle. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna notch out grooves this way. I know I said I was gonna do a dovetail down the middle, but I got to thinking about it and with the action that I want to be able to slide back and forth like this, that something like a uh, dresser drawer pulling out would be a little bit better. Uh, I feel like if I did a dovetail um, I'd end up just wrecking the base because I'd probably get too excited and pull up or pull it in a funny way to try and catch the fish. Another couple things I've noticed with it, you know, I'm not an expert. Um, this has been a fun project. Some things I've learned, you know, you gotta double check and make sure you're on center. My reel's a little bit off center but it's not too bad um, 
this is a bait casting reel, bait casting setup, the whole thing. But I'm transforming it into a uh, underside because I think that'll be best for the dead stick having the weight carried on the bottom instead of having it awkwardly on the top. So that's why you see it here on the bottom. I've just used uh, electrical tape and some zip ties to secure the reel and it's, it's on there tight. So now let's get to making some notches. So I'm not using any super fancy tools. I don't think they're super fancy, but I have a collection of knives or chisels, wood chisels. You can use them for other things. I've used them for pumpkins, as you can see. Just picked these up at Lee Valley Tools. Actually, I think it was a Christmas present. So let's get to it. So all I'm gonna do, is instead of doing a dovetail down through the center, I'm just gonna do two notches on each side, probably about a quarter inch on each side, quarter inch up, quarter inch deep. Everything's gonna be a quarter inch. And that should be enough to secure the base into, or the base of the rod, into the base of the uh, tip up or the uh, dead stick. I haven't quite decided if I want to make it into a tip up. It's got pretty good action. I think if I had it secured down, and uh, whenever the fish goes to nibble, it would self set the hook quite well. The rod is not uh, itself, it's fiberglass, it's not uh, graphite, so it's a little tougher, but the sensitivity isn't there. But if you're not really using it to jig or anything like that as a dead stick, you don't really need that sensitivity, but that flex is really nice. That's what I'm looking for. So if I did make it into a tip up, I would have probably a rod attached to the base sitting here. And as the fish goes to nibble, 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 would self set, or it would launch the hook straight up the hole and into the air and it would look funny and I'd look like a pretty bad engineer, which might happen anyways. So but the epoxy, worked really well as you can see where the rod goes in very good stuff kind of wish I got that a little sooner for some other projects I was working on it's uh, supposed to be UV resistant so it won't yellow or anything like that but that's enough talking let's get carbon
I've got my groove all notched out, carved out. Works pretty good. I probably won't be using metal on my base, but you just would, and it'll slide in and out. So I'm just going to copy that groove on the other side, and um, that's the handle. That's the base part. Um, that's the handle, rod part, for my uh, tip up. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just going to continue that groove on the other side. I don't think you guys need to see that, so that's part one. Part two, I'll be building the base that this is going to slide in and out of. So thanks for watching. Have any comments? Let me know what you think. I'm excited to see how it works, or if it does. Can you say, please subscribe? Like, like, comment, like, comment.